can you see yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, so this is yes sir and this is the tx this is the tx tx stands for this is the plus minus tx tx stands for the either plus mean secretion minus mean reabsorption now so let us uh, start our discussion proper how kidney handles the solute or i should say how kidney handles the filtrate so there is a large amount of filtrate is formed large amount of filtrate is formed amounting to around 180 liter per day out of which only 1 to 2 liter of urine is formed and also there are lot of amount of solute is also recovered so let us see how this they are being handled so this is a picture this is a picture of uh, or or the chart is a table indicating the solute handling by the kidney see see if you see clearly see glucose see the glucose is almost 100% recovered or reabsorbed per day around 800 millimole 800 millimole of glucose is 800 millimole of glucose is uh, filtered and similar amount of glucose is reabsorbed so excreted is zero almost zero so it is 100% Sim and also it is true for bicarbonate also and it is also almost true for water there is around 180 liters of water uh, is re um, and filtered out of which uh, 179 liter of water is reabsorbed only 1 liter of water is excreted So it is amounting to around 99 point, almost 9 percent, 99 point nine. So huge. So and this is the picture of other solute, other important solute, other important solute, say potassium, say chloride, then urea, etc. Now how this handling taking place? So today I I shall not, I will not discuss about the individual uh, area of nephron or individual uh, solute. we shall discuss the general principle which is very very important now to understand the principle of tubular function we usually the customary or conventional teaching practice is to understand the renal handling of two substances one is glucose and another is para amino hippuric acid glucose is classic a substance which is classically reabsorbed and para amino hippuric acid is a substance which is classically secreted so conventionally we take these two substance to understand what is happening in the tubule so let us take up one by one so the, so the, i uh, return back to the um, nephron equation uxv is equal to px gfr plus minus ex uxv means ux means milligram per ml it is a concentration milligram per ml concentration v means volume per minute ml per minute is equal to milligram per ml again concentration px and gfr means ml per minute volume per unit time plus minus tx means milligram per minute so as a whole it is milligram per minute is equal to milligram per minute so amount of uh, amount of a substrate filtered plus minus amount of that substance either reabsorbed or secreted or both is equal to amount of that substance excreted so that is the essence of the uh, nephron equation and it is like that now if we try to discuss the glucose so if we rewrite the equation in terms of glucose so this, that will be the equation because glucose for glucose it will be minus because glucose is typically reabsorbed so we shall rewrite the equation like that ug ugv is equal to pg gfr minus tg that means amount of glucose present in the urine per unit time is equal to amount of glucose filtered per unit time minus amount of glucose reabsorbed per unit time so this is the nephron equation with respect to glucose handling handling of glucose <coughs> so if we see it in this uh, line drawing so this is the um, uh, glomerulus and this is the um, uh, afferent arteriole where we can measure the plasma glucose and this is the glomerular filtration this is the glomerular filtration and this is called gfr and this is the amount known as pg gfr 
that means plasma glucose multiplied by j bar so that is the filtered load we sometimes call it filtered load of j bar sorry filtered load of glucose pggfr means filtered load of glucose so if we see in reality so if we take this portion and magnify it magnify it so this is a portion of the tubule this is a portion of the tubule and this is a portion of the peritubular capillary peritubular capillary and here is the pg here so transport of glucose is taking place there here transport of glucose is taking place here and when it is transported it is transported like that and entering into the peritubular capillary tracheus <clears throat> now normally normally what happens glucose is reabsorbed 100% that means normally the filtered load filtered load of glucose is equal to the amount of glucose reabsorbed as a result of which in urine glucose is not present so normally pggfr is equal to pg normally pggfr is equal to tg so ugv is zero so that is about the glucose now there is another so in this juncture there is another very important issue so when this glucose is transported when this glucose is transported across the tubular lumen how it is transported it is transported by some carrier mediated by some carrier mediated pathway i am not specifying what carrier carrier mediated pathway now for for the time being it may be glute it may be sgnt sodium dependent glucose transport or it may be glucose transport simple whatever it is we shall discuss that but the, for the time being we remember that this glucose which is transported out of the tubular lumen is a kind of a transport known as carrier mediated transport so it is a kind of carrier mediated transport and we all know whenever a molecule is undergoing carrier mediated transport it exhibits a phenomena known as saturation kinetics that means when a molecule is binding with the carrier and the substrate carrier complex is transported as a whole so a substrate or a molecule is binding with the carrier forming substrate carrier complex and that substrate carrier complex is uh, transported as a whole so for sub the reabsorption of glucose you need to require the sub uh, carrier so there is a question of carrier saturation if you increase the amount of glucose in the tubular lumen if you go on increasing the amount of glucose in the tubular lumen or if you go on increasing the filtered load of glucose suppose plasma glucose level is gradually and gradually increased when the plasma glucose level is gradually and gradually increased what will happen pg will increase so pg gfr will increase filtered load of glucose will increase when this filtered load of glucose will increase the transport of glucose that means reabsorption of glucose from the tubular lumen will also increase will also increase but it will not increase indefinitely a point of time will come when all the available carriers will get saturated will get occupied all the available carriers will get occupied and even with increasing in the glucose concentration in the tubular lumen it will not increase the tubular transport of glucose because the saturation will be rich so let me show you so this is the picture what we have shown you in your first class or during your general physiology days so this is a simple diffusion simple diffusion so x is the substrate jx is the rate of diffusion so when the concentration of x is increased when the concentration of x is increased gradually and gradually the rate of diffusion is also increasing it is rather a physical phenomenon but in case this is for simple diffusion but for a carrier mediated diffusion like facilitated diffusion carrier mediated diffusion what will happen if we go on increasing the x it it will lead to increase in the j jx but a, after some time it will achieve a plateau so what is known as j max mane maximum transport rate maximum transport j max then it will achieve a an issue known as saturation so in case of any carrier mediated transport we see saturation so this is the saturation part which which happens same thing here happens in the tubular lumen also 
Now, this saturation of PG is designated as T max G. In earlier, it was known as, here it was shown as J max. In tubule, we call it T max. T max. T max means, T max means transport maxima of glucose. Transport maxima of glucose. So, when glucose concentration is increasing in the plasma, leading to increased filtered load of glucose, leading to increased transport of glucose, increased reabsorption of glucose from the tubular lumen, a point of time will be reached, a point will be reached when it will achieve a Tmax G. And then the extra amount of glucose will not be reabsorbed and it will be excreted to the kidney. So the value of Tmax G, it has been calculated experimentally, it has been determined experimentally, it is found to be around 375 milligram per minute because it is a transport rate. It is milligram per minute in case of male and it is around 307 milligram per minute in case of female. So this is the value of Tmax G. Now by knowing all this, by knowing all this, at the point of transport saturation of the tubule, suppose the PG is increasing, PG GFR is increasing, and TG is increasing. And as the TG is increasing, it will achieve, it will reach a transport maximum. Now, at the point of transport saturation, at the point of the transport saturation, let us calculate the plasma concentration of glucose. Let us back calculate. Let us back calculate when transport saturation or transport maximum for glucose is reached at the tubular level. What would be the value of uh, plasma concentration of glucose? If we calculate that, it is easy to calculation. Easy calculation. T max G is equal to PG GFR because up to T max G, it is PG GFR. So, or 375 milligram per minute is equal to plasma glucose multiplied by GFR 125 ml per minute. So, PG will be plasma glucose will be 3 milligram per ml. So the, it is that plasma glucose, when this plasma glucose is reached, it will lead to saturation of the uh, transport mechanism or uh, reaching of the Tmax G. So that or it is 3 milligram per ml or 300 milligram per deciliter. 300 milligram per deciliter. It is also known as plasma threshold value for glucose. It is also known as plasma threshold value for glucose. What is plasma threshold value for glucose? Plasma threshold value for glucose is that concentration of plasma glucose which will lead to generation of transport maxima at the tubular level. So which will lead to genesis of generation of transport maxima at the tubular level and that is known as plasma threshold value for glucose. Now there is another point. There is another point. Another point is that, ach, anyway, we shall discuss the another point later. So for the time being, let me allow me to uh, generate it. So this is a uh, paint uh, blank paint where I will gradually. So this is a this is an x-axis. You see in the x-axis, x-axis is so I will draw the graphical representation. I will draw the graphical representation of uh, so in the x-axis is PG, when plasma glucose, and in the y-axis there is filtered load PGGFR, TG that means transport of glucose, and UGV that means urinary excretion of glucose in three different colors. So let me draw first. Let me draw. So let me draw the PGGFR first. So if we draw PGGFR, if we draw PGGFR. It will be like this. It will be like this. Or if we draw PGGFR, so it will be like this. As the plasma glucose is increasing, filtered load of glucose is also increasing. It is just linear in nature. It is increasing. So this is the relation between plasma glucose and PGGFR, filtered load of glucose. Now let us draw the TG. Let us draw the TG. So as the plasma glucose is increasing, filtered load of glucose is also increasing. So the transport of glucose will also increase linearly. Transport of glucose will also increase till it achieves, till it achieves the transport maxima. When it achieves the transport maxima, when it achieves the transport maxima, it will become saturated. 
when it achieves the transport maxima, it will achieve a plateau and it will become saturated. There will be no further increase in the transport rate. Next, let us see what happened to UGV. What happened to UGV? For UGV? So, as long as the glucose is 100% reabsorbed, in urine, glucose is not present. As long as it is 100% reabsorbed, glucose is not present. It is not present up to this, up to this, as, well, as long as it is 100% reabsorbed. But as soon as it reaches the transport maxima and it becomes a plateau, now the glucose will appear. Now the glucose will appear and that will go parallel. That will go parallel to this curve, to this two curve, that will go parallel. So, this reddish curve is the curve expressing the PGGFR with respect to PG. The green curve is representing the TG, transport of glucose with respect to increasing plasma glucose. And the blue curve is exhibiting the urinary excretion of glucose with respect to plasma glucose. So, these three curves, they are popularly known as glucose titration curve. These three cards are popularly known as glucose titration cards. They are known as glucose titration cards. They are known as glucose titration cards. So, this is the glucose titration cards. I am going to show you the complexity of the glucose titration cards. So, I have shown you the simplified representation. So, these are the three cards. These are the three cards. You try to follow. These are the three cards. It, it is in. Uh, so, this is the. This is the. This is straight line. This straight line. This straight line is the uh, PGGFR card. This one is the TG card, which becomes a plateau. And this becomes urinary card, which is gradually appearing. Now, as you correctly pointed out, as you correctly pointed out, the curve which I have shown you in my drawn diagram, they are sharply, they are achieving, acquiring a sharp bend. But in reality, the bend is not that sharp. Bend is rather biological. Bend is rather, this bend, this change, this uh, changeover is rather not that sharp, is rather gradual. Is rather gradual. As a result of which, as a result of which, what we have calculated as PGG, PG, money plasma threshold value for glucose as 300 millimeter of mercury, uh, milligram per dl, sorry, 300 milligram per dl as plasma threshold value for glucose is rather less, is rather less instead of, so instead of, instead of here, it is rather there, it is rather there instead of here, it is rather there, it is rather there. So, this plasma threshold value for glucose has got two values. One is a theoretically predicted value, theoretically predicted value, or the virtual value, and another is a real value or practical value. So real value, real value is much less. It is around 200 to 180 milli, uh, milligram per dl. 180 milligram per dl, 200 to 180 milligram per dl, and theoretically predicted value is around 300 milligram per dl. Similarly, this thing is exhibited in here also. Here also it is it is rather gradual pain. Now this phenomena, this phenomena, this this gradual change over this phenomena physiologically is known as splay. Splay. S P L A Y splay. We shall discuss the splay later. So if we recapitulate this again, if we recapitulate this again, so side by side, this is the calculation, this is the calculation, and this is the graph. This is the glucose titration curves, glucose titration curves, how the three important parameters that will filter load of glucose, filtered load of glucose, absorption of glucose, and excretion of glucose, they are related in this diagram that is being shown here. Now, now there are some other attributes. There are some important attributes of this, some important attributes of uh, uh, this uh, glucose titration. First of all, I have told you about the transport maxima. I have already described it and discussed it. Transport maxima is nothing but the saturation level, saturation kinetic, indication of saturation kinetics. Second thing I have already described 
there is the plasma threshold value. What is plasma threshold value of glucose? Plasma threshold value is that value of plasma concentration of glucose at which the Tmax transport maximum level is reached at the tubular lumen. Number three, theoretical and calculated, value, calculated values. So we know what is theoretically predicted values or calculated values and that is about around 300 milligram per deciliter. And what is practical value? Practical value is rather experimentally observed value or what is taking place in reality. What is taking place in reality? Why there is a difference between theoretically calculated value and practical value? Due to the phenomenon of split. Reason is split. So what is split? What is split? Now, so these are the some of the issues. These are the some of the issues. Now let me describe the splay phenomenon. What is splay? Splay is the splay, as I've shown here. This is the splay. It's a kind of a knee, kind of a knee, kind of a knee, atur motan, like that of a knee, gradual bend. Why there is gradual bend? So, truly speaking, the exact explanation or detail and precise explanation of splay is not really fully explained but there are some hypotheses first of all first of all it is said or the most important it is said that this carrier mediated transport of glucose in the tubular lumen it is rather a bi-directional process it is rather a bi-directional process carrier mediated transport of um, uh, it is it is rather a bi-directional process that means we can write like that. We can write like that. It is rather a bidirectional process. That means S S plus carrier Substrate plus carrier is equal to substrate carrier complex, but this is bi direction and following law of mass action. So, substrate plus carrier is equal to substrate carrier, but this reaction is bi directional and having have, and following law of mass action and having an association constant like KM. Having an association constant like KM, KM means Michael is Menton constant. We you all know lower the KM. Greater the affinity, KM determines the affinity of substrate for the carrier or for the receptor. So substrate receptor complex or substrate carrier complex, it is a bidirectional reaction following law of mass section, having a association dissociation constant or Michael is Menton constant, having a, and having a moderate KM for glucose, it is the KM is more or less a moderate. So what they propose that as glucose is associating with the carrier, to form glucose carrier complex at the same time it is also dissociating from the glucose carrier complex to glucose and carrier uh, separately accordingly every time every time some amount of glucose is always present every time some amount of glucose free glucose is present and it is probably the reason of spray so this is one way they are trying to explain the spray albeit inadequately second explanation they uh, proposed to give the issue of nephron heterogeneity. Again, it is a very poor kind of explanation, nephron heterogeneity. It is told that every nephron do not having, does not having similar reabsorptive ability. Every nephron do not, does not have similar reabsorptive ability, reabsorptive ability. Someone having a, uh, there is a differentiation. There is, there is some um, heterogeneity in the reabsorptive ability and thereby they uh, wanted to or tried to attempt it to explain the split. Although as I have told you, it is a, all these are inadequate explanation. Real reason of play 
is not really known. Now, with this backdrop, so uh, uh, so this is about the glucose titration curve and how glucose is handled by the nephron. And finally, I will show you the similar curve of PAH titration curve. I am not going in detail about the PAH titration curve, it is almost similar. Only thing is, glucose is reabsorbed. Glucose is 100% reabsorbed, whereas paraminohypuric acid or paraminohypurate, it is highly secreted, it is 99% secreted. Accordingly, the titration curves are different. Titration curve, that, that means the feature of the titration curves are different, although pattern is same. If you compare these two titration curves, this is a glucose titration curve, and this is a glucose titration curve, and this is a paraminohypuric acid titration curve. As it is secreted, as it is secreted, this curve is moving in this direction. This curve is moving in this direction. Excretion is more, so filtration plus transport. Here, transport is plus, plus. That means secretion, and as a whole, it is excretion is combination of these two, combination of these two, but both of both of this card, both of these two sets of card, like glucose titration card and pH titration card, both are exhibiting the phenomena of splay. Both are exhibiting the phenomena of splay, the reason for which is not really known, not clearly known, with some hypothesized attempt of explanation. So this is all for today. So this is in brief, very brief, the basic principles of tubular function. Probably we have some time. If you have got, if you have got any question, you can now ask. If you have got any question, you can ask. Sir, but T max here value ta change hobe na. Ane practical a theory mothe. PG value ta change hobe bolche. Ki bolche? Abar bolo. No, practical value or theoretical value je mane problem ta bolle na. Hmm. Ota sir T max here change hobe na. PG jono change. No, no, your money. Um, um, uh, in that See, I said that PG will end up. No, I am showing you the PG. Do you know, economy instead of a sharp bend for transport, economy key the gachi. J as the filtered load is increasing, the transport is also increasing, and a, at a point of time, there is a sharp change, but this sharp change is not there, not there. It is a gradual change. Practically, the change is gradual. So practically, the transport maximum which is shown here is also a bit earlier. Not only PG, but also the TG also. The transport maxima which is shown here, shown here, theoretical value, practical value of transport maxima is a bit earlier. A bit earlier because the curve is bend in nature, gradual in nature. First, the hypothesis is that when it is reversible, substrate plus carrier. So, I am going to say substrate substrate plus carrier is equal to substrate carrier, and it is a bidirectional reaction following law of mass action, having a association dissociation constant. What I mean to say, some free sugar is always present. Some free in sugar. Turin. Huh? In the money from free sugar is always present in the tubular lumen, which is again reabsorbed, but again some free sugar is always present. So it is appearing as a result of that the money, money, uh, the appearance of sugar, appearance of sugar is a bit earlier as predicted, as predicted by the theoretical value, as per prediction of the theoretical value, it remains a bit earlier, and truly speaking. Sugar is present in the urine in trace amount. It is not 100% reabsorption, although we say it as a theoretical proposition, but sugar is present in the urine, but in a trace amount. Some very minimum amount of sugar is present. Very minimum amount of sugar is present. So that is probably the reason of the, they are, they are proposing like that. They are trying to explain like that, attempting to, attempting to explain the spray in that way. Although they have told that it is not an adequate attempt or adequate expansion. Sir, TMG is male on a table. Is female comparison? Can you tell me about the question? Question for the history. It's a question. 
প্রবাবলি কিছু আছে ব্যাপার আমি আমি বলতে পারছি না জানি না ঠিক এটা আমাকে একটু বুঝতে হবে মানে থ্রি সেভেন্টি ফাইভ মিলিগ্রাম পার মিনিট মিনিট ইন কেস অফ মেন অ্যান্ড থ্রি হান্ড্রেড আমি স্যার বলছি তখন আমি নেফ্রন হেট্রোজেনেসিটি ঠিক মানে শুনতে পাইনি আর নেফ্রন হেট্রোজেনেসিটি না খুবই একটা কাইন্ড অফ এ পুয়ার এক্সপ্লেনেশন বলছে যে নেফ্রন গুলো সব এক রকম নয় কোন কোন নেফ্রনের গ্লুকোজ রিঅ্যাবজর্পশন এবিলিটিটা বেশি আর কোন কোন নেফ্রনের গ্লুকোজ রিঅ্যাবজর্পশন এবিলিটি কম এখন এইটাই বলা আছে সেই জন্য এটা এই ভাবে বলা হচ্ছে মানে যেটা কম সেটা তো তার হয়তো পিএনজি তে একটু কম মানে পিএনজি তে অত বেশি নয় একটু লো মানে আই ওয়ান্টেড টু ডিসকাস দিস পিকচার দিস ইজ এ ভেরি ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট পিকচার এক্সট্রিমলি ইম্পর্টেন্ট পিকচার দিস ইজ এক্সট্রিমলি ইম্পর্টেন্ট পিকচার এই পিকচার তোমরা সবাই ভালো করে দেখবে স্ট্রাকচার কোরিলেট উইথ ফাংশন স্ট্রাকচার কোরিলেট উইথ ফাংশন দিস ইজ এ বেসিক ক্যাচ লাইন ইন ফিজিওলজি এভরিওয়্যার এন্ড স্পেশালি ইন কিডনি কিডনি ইজ এ স্ট্রাকচার হুইচ উই কল এ হাইলি ইম্প্রোভাইজড অর্গান হাইলি ইম্প্রোভাইজড there are lot of exceptional feature in kidney as i have told you in my earlier class and we shall go on time and again we shall go on justify that say this is in the proximal tubule see in the proximal tubule here in the proximal tubule the villus is there is a plenty of villus what is villus villus is nothing but a mucosal folding and in order to increase the available surface area <coughs> where we get villus we we get villus in those area where large amount of membrane transport is taking place where large amount of membrane transport is taking place there we get villus as we get in intestine in small intestine so here also we get villus see here we get large amount of villus and very big nucleus and plenty of mitochondria plenty of mitochondria so you know ki bojha hai what they indicate they indicate there is a large amount of membrane transport is taking place number 1 number 2 those transport is probably active in nature active transport because plenty of plenty of uh, plenty of uh, mitochondria and also mitochondria. plenty of mitochondria very big plenty of mitochondria and also very big nucleus which indicate there is a active cell whereas if you see in case of a in case of a descending limb of loop of henle see it is much thinner in proximal tubule it is cuboidal epithelium it is a flattened epithelium there is hardly any villus there is hardly any villus hardly any villus and also hardly any mitochondria so all these things indicate that they are probably involved in some some uh, passive transport or passive diffusion to justify thing i am showing you some scanning electron microscope picture see this is a picture of the bowman's capsule from where the proximal tubule is started bowman's capsule from where the proximal tubule is started see this is the capsular part this is the capsular part and this is the tubular part soon the starting of the tubule there are plenty of villus plenty of villus you can see plenty of villus if we go to the other picture this is a this is a cross section of proximal tubule see there are plenty of villus cross section of proximal tubule plenty of villus 
this is plenty of villas cross section of proximal tubule again cross section of proximal tubule plenty of villas and this is a picture this is another scanning electron microscope picture what is showing that is the proximal tubule and this is the starting of <coughs> descending limb of loop of hendle so there is an abrupt transition see there is an abrupt transition in the proximal tubule there are plenty of villas and here there is there is no villas and this picture is a cross section but is an oblique section oblique section as a result of op making a oblique section a portion of the proximal tubule is incorporated and a portion of uh, descending limb is incorporated in the same uh, uh, same uh, section in the same section a bit oblique section is made at the junction of proximal tubule and at the junction of proximal tubule and descending limb of loop open see in the proximal tubule there is a plenty of villas plenty of mitochondria whereas in the descending limb there is hardly any villas hardly any mitochondria so this is precisely giving us a hint that proximal tubule will be involved in large amount of transport large amount of transport and utilizing some energy dependent mechanism whereas descending limb of loop of henle will involve in less amount of transport and mostly that too mostly of passive transport without any energy involving process so this is the structural basis i am i am developing my structural backdrop on which i shall discuss the function i shall discuss the physiology either tomorrow or the other day are kono question bol sir apne clearance porichilen na porai porai ni porai ni baba clearance ami uv by p porichi bolechi kintu clearance ta ami byapok orthe byakkha kora jete pare ami kori ni ami jokhon regulation of renal function porabo tar moddhe ami korbo ami next ami tubular function porabo okay sir ha tubular function porabo sir eta question chilo bolo 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 फ्लो उच इज इम्पोर्टेंट एंड Uh, filtrate is nothing but plasma minus cell and protein that's why it is called ultra Achha. filtration it is not a simple filtration it is an ultra filtration Achha. so that's why it is so it, it is basically plasma which is filtered so 3 liter of plasma is filtered 60 times per day total filtrate is 180 liter and plasma is 3 liter so 3 liter total plasma volume of our body is circulated and recirculated and filtered and refiltered 60 times per day so that plasma is important acha acha thik ache thik ache amra ha ajke bari theki korchi next hoyto amra college e jabo college er oi telemedicine e byabostha hoyeche oder server onek bhalo college thek korbo tomader ekta routine diyeche college routine ta diye debo routine ta diye debo anatomy physiology biochemistry alada alada kore da hoyeche seta ami diye debo ami thik ache ar tumra tomader question question ja ache likhe rakho